Are you afraid of dating again because you've been hurt in the past? If so, you're not alone. Fear of heartache is one of the biggest reasons people shy away from dating after a divorce or the end of a relationship. Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rick Sotabeer, and I'm an author and dating coach. For the past 10 years, I've been guiding midlife singles to transform dating into lasting relationships. In this video, I'm going to share with you the primary cause of major heartbreak and a couple of tips to prevent a broken heart in the future. If you're like many midlife singles, whether divorced or widowed, the thought of opening your heart to someone new can be downright terrifying. The fear of being hurt again, of going through the pain of heartbreak, can feel overwhelming. But where does this fear come from? For many, the source of heartache lies in two main areas. First, poor choices in partners. We've all been there, caught up in the whirlwind of a romance, only to realize later that the person we chose wasn't right for us. And second, settling for less than we deserve. Often we find ourselves compromising on the standards we've set for ourselves. Maybe we've ignored the must-haves or let a deal-breaker slip through because we wanted companionship more than we wanted a healthy relationship. This pattern of ignoring red flags and settling for less is what leads to heartbreak for so many people. That's one of the reasons I co-authored my book, Dating Backward. I wanted to shift the focus from fixing broken relationships to preventing them from happening in the first place. The truth is, many people don't evaluate the dating process properly. Why? Because when we're caught up in the infatuation phase, it's easy to believe we've found the one. We get blinded by emotion and ignore critical warning signs only to wake up months or years later wondering what the heck happened. According to research, infatuation can last up to two years, and during this time we make emotionally driven decisions that often don't serve us well in the long run. The Role of Emotions in Making Decisions Human nature drives us to make emotionally based decisions and justify them with logic later on. A study revealed that as many as or as much as 95% of our decisions are made based on emotions, and dating is no exception. Think about the last big purchase you made, like a car or a house. Sure, you may have done some research, but it wasn't until you sat in that car, smelled the new car smell, and felt the steering wheel in your hands that you just knew this was the one. Your senses played into your emotions, and your emotions took control. Only afterward did you justify the purchase with practical reasons like fuel economy, the number of, of people at seats, or extended warranties. Dating works much the same way. You meet someone who checks off some of your boxes. Maybe they have a great sense of humor, they're kind, and the chemistry is there. But were they really the person you envisioned for yourself? Did they meet all your must-haves? And what about the deal breakers? Did you overlook those because you were caught up in the moment, in the fun of, and excitement of companionship? That's the danger of infatuation. It blinds us to reality. It makes us overlook the warning signs, or worse, ignore them entirely because you're focused on how good the relationship feels in the moment. As infatuation fades, which it always does, we start to see cracks in the relationship. We notice the red flags we missed or ignored, and that's when the heartache begins. We either try to fix the relationship, bend over backward to accommodate the other person, or stay in a relationship we know isn't right for us. Breaking the cycle of fear and heartache. The Bible offers timeless wisdom in it for navigating relationships and overcoming fear. In 2 Timothy 1.7, we're reminded that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear doesn't come from God. It's a product of our past experiences, but it doesn't have to control our future. With God's help, we can approach dating with wisdom and discernment, not fear. Proverbs 4.23 encourages us to guard our heart above all else, for it determines the course of our lives. When we guard our hearts, we're not closing ourselves off to love, but we're being wise about who we let in. 
we're taking the time to evaluate whether someone truly meets our standards that we've set for ourselves, whether they align with our values, and whether they treat us with love and respect we deserve. It's also important to remember that no one is perfect, and Colossians 3.13 reminds us to bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has grievance against someone. Relationships require grace, but grace should never mean settling for less than God's best for you. Moving forward with confidence. So how do we move forward? How do we overcome fear and heartache and step back into the world of dating with confidence? Well, first, identify your must-haves and your deal-breakers. Know what you're looking for in a relationship before you even start dating again. Don't compromise on your core values or overlook red flags in the heat of the moment. Second, take things slow. Infatuation is powerful, but it doesn't last. Give yourself time to truly get to know someone. As 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 reminds us, love is patient. True love doesn't rush. This is also a great time to use your must-have and deal-breaker list to step back out of the raging hormones of infatuation and evaluate whether someone is truly a good fit for you. And third, trust God's timing. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 reminds us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your, your paths straight. God has a plan for your life, and his timing is perfect. Trust that he will lead you to the right person when the time is right. Dating doesn't have to be filled with fear and anxiety. By learning from past experiences, guiding your heart with wisdom, and trusting in God's plan, you can open yourself up to the possibility of finding a truly extraordinary relationship. If you want to learn even more about healthier dating, I have an on-demand master class, The Five Biggest Dating and Relationship Mistakes and How to Avoid Them Without Giving Up Dating. In about 45 minutes, you'll learn the five biggest mistakes most people make and my five best tips on how to prevent or avoid them. The link is below in the comments. I'm Rick Sodebeer, your guide to midlife dating. I'll see you in the next video.